Hi everyone, my name is Big Mac by Gillette. I wanted to show you today how to convert decimals to fractions. Uh, this is what I'll be doing a basic layout of. I'll go over some basic common fractions that we see in everyday life. I'll talk about the difference between repeating and non-repeating decimals. I'll show you two techniques to convert these decimals to fractions. One a general case and the other a shorthand method. And for each method, I will give you two examples. So here are some basic fractions that uh, most of us have seen in everyday form. Uh, we all know one third, one half, one fourth, one fifth. Um, you know, here are a couple others that I just put on the chart. Uh, the thing worth noticing is that some decimals tend to stop after a few decimal points, and others tend to go on forever. So if you see one third, one sixth, one seventh, one ninth, one eleventh, those all seem to go on forever. And of course, I'm using standard bar notation, where the bar over the numbers means that those groups of numbers repeat over and over again. So what kind am I talking about? There are two kinds. There's repeating decimals and non-repeating decimals. Uh, so as we saw, repeating decimals go on forever. So they are the ones that have that bar notation overhead. So here's an example. I did 112 over 999. So we get 0.112, 112, 112, 112, 112, 112 etc. So for a certain shorthand notation, we can just write 0.112 with a bar over it. Non-repeating decimals can either be finite, so they can either have a finite number of points after the decimal, like we saw in one half, one tenth, or as we have here, one over 640. They can also go on forever, but never have a repeating pattern. So here's this weird number, I call it the square root of two, so which is about 1.414, such that when you multiply it with itself, you get exactly two. So if you want to try and find out that point to a few uh, decimal points, it'll go on ahead. But for the purpose of this talk, I will be focusing on repeating decimals. So first I'll talk about the general method to convert uh, decimals into fractions. So these are the things that we need to take account of. How many numbers are, repeated, are repeating? How many uh, groups of numbers? If it is just one number that repeats, is it two numbers? Uh, we also need to keep track of where the decimal point is. That way, we have to do a subtraction later. So that way, when we do our subtraction, we can make sure that everything lines up correctly. Uh, another thing to keep account of is powers of 10, which I mean 10, 100, 1,000. Basically, how many zeros follow the 1. So here's how we do the general method. Let x be the fraction you want to solve for. You know, So x can be your decimal number. And let y be the number of repeating decimals. So I have two examples here. I have 0 0.3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. So the first case, the 1, 2 repeats. So we have two digits that repeat, so y is just 2. In our second case, 0 0.44444, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, etc. Uh, the 4 is the only number that repeats, so we just set y to 1. So we have our fraction x, and let's multiply it by 10 to the y. So let's call this one z so we can distinguish them. So again, multiplying a number by 10 to a power is the same thing as moving it y spaces to the right. So if you're not familiar with your powers of 10, just make sure to move your uh, value to the, of the decimal point over the correct number of spaces. Next, we need to subtract our smaller number from our larger number. So again, this is where it's important to line up our decimal point. And then on the left side, uh, depending on what the value of y was, We'll have 9x or 99x or 999x, etc. On the right side, uh, something awesome will happen. All or most of the repeating digits will cancel each other out. So we'll have a finite number on the right side that doesn't go on forever. So then what we can do is we have this number on the right and divide it by the number on the left. And this is our fraction. Um, we may have to reduce it a little more to get it into lowest terms, but now we'll go into two examples real quick. Uh, the first one we saw is a 0.4444. So again, we have one number, the 4, which repeats. So we can just use y equals 1. So then our number z is just 10 to the power of 1 times x. So if we move the decimal point over one spot, we'll have 4.44444. So again, if we uh, subtract our smaller number from our larger number, uh, you'll see that we have all the 4s after the decimal point just cancel out. So on the left side we have 9 times our fraction x equals 4. So then it's easy to see that if we divide 4 by the number on the left, 
we have our fraction of 4 ninths. The other example that I mentioned earlier is 0 0.3121212, where the 1, 2 repeats. So in our case, y is 2. So then for our number z, we move it two decimal points to the right. So we'll have 31.2121212. Again, we subtract the smaller number from the larger number. And we have 99x on the left side and 30.9 on the right side. So most of the digits after the decimal point canceled out, but we had a remainder of 0.9. So we'll just have to take that into account when we uh, find our final fraction. So we take that number divided by the one on the left. We have 30.9 over 99. Um, to reduce it a little bit, let's uh, multiply both sides by 10. We have 309 over 990, in which you can uh, divide both sides by 3. So we have 103 over 330. The quick method, um, some people prefer to do it this way, but basically you split the fraction up into two parts. You solve the numerator and you solve the denominator, which are the top and bottom part of your fractions separately. So how we construct the denominator is again, we have to account for the numbers that are repeating and the numbers that aren't repeating. So for the numbers that are repeating, which was our y in the previous case for the general method, for each number of y, uh, we count down or we write down a 9 for each repeating number. So if we had two numbers that repeat, we would write two 9s, so 99. And then if there are any non-repeating decimals be before the repeating decimals, we write a 0 after our 9s. So our denominator will consist of one number, which consists of 9s and zeros. So, you know, the 9 would always be in the front, so it would be 9 or 90 or 99, 900, uh, so it'll start with the nines and then it'll end up with the zeros if there are any. The numerator is a little more uh, complicated, so I'll go through that in the example a little more carefully. Um, basically, treat your non-repeating numbers and the first set of your repeating numbers as one uh, large number. Then you're going to subtract from that the just the smaller numbers of the non-repeating part. Which sounds a little weird, but again, I'll, it'll make more sense in the uh, through the example. But again, this number will be our denominator, and then we have our numerator over our denominator, which is our fraction. So again, here we have 0.444 again. Uh, we have one repeating number, which is a 4. So we have one repeating number, so we would write a 9 in the denominator. And in this case, there are no non-repeating digits in between the decimal point and the 4. So we do not write a 0 in the denominator, so our denominator is just 9, and then the numerator is just the first repeating number, which is 4. So then we have 4 over 9, 4 ninths. For our second example, uh, we have again two repeating numbers, the 1 and the 2, and we have the non-repeating number, which is the 3 in this case. So we have two repeating numbers, so we write two nines, and then we have one non-repeating number, so then we write a 0 afterwards. So our denominator is 990. For our numerator, we have to find our big number, which in this case is the non-repeats, the 3, and the first set of repeats, the 1, 2. So we treat our 3, 1, 2 as one big number. Then we subtract the numbers that aren't repeating, so in this case it's just the 3. So we do 312 minus 3, 309, which is the numerator. Doesn't that look familiar? So again, we have our numerator and our denominator, so we have 309 over 990, just like before. So in conclusion, uh, you know, people have their choice of which method they can choose. Uh, you know, choose whichever one you feel most comfortable with. The general method will reveal the, function, the fraction altogether, and the, set, and the quick method will, you know, help you build the numerator and the denominator separately. Of course, you might have to uh, reduce your fraction a little bit further to get it into lowest terms. So I thought I would finish off by giving you guys a couple of decimals to practice with. I will put the answers uh, hidden in the uh, in the side box, so you can check those out after the video is done. Hopefully, you didn't look up there before. Um, so here are some fractions or some decimals for you to for you to practice with. Uh, try and convert them to fractions. Use either method you prefer. All right, this is uh, Big Man by Dulet saying thank you and later.